<clears throat> What's up, everybody? This is my weekly live stream on Neo Mustangs. It's good to see everybody. Good to, good to be here. Um, as you guys all know, we like to do a live stream once a week on Sundays at about 8 o'clock. Um, so if you're new to the channel, make sure you guys check the channel out. You know, hit that subscribe button. I enjoy everybody, uh, everybody's conversation in the here in the uh, in in their input and on our on our whiteboard when we're trying to learn something about fox bodies. And uh, anyways, uh, appreciate everybody for just joining us tonight. Uh, we will be working on the whiteboard, and as you guys see from the thumbnail, um, the uh, the topic of the evening is you know four cylinder to V8 conversion now. Um, I know that's not really a, a big topic to some of you guys, but let's just put it this way. It's getting to the point to where, um, you, you know, we're going to have to get crafty with our Fox bodies as far as like, you know, the, eventually the V8s are just going to, you know, start kind of, you know, drying up, you know, it's going to be hard to find them. And I, I know there's, you know, everyone has their different opinions about it. But, uh, you know, one thing I wanted to bring to the live chat, to the live streams that <clears throat> helps everybody, and it's information that, that that can be carried out for a long period of time, you know, you, you know, just like my mass air uh, harness videos. Uh, it's just information and knowledge that I've had that I've experienced over the years, me and Cousin Paul have, and, you know, Cousin Fred, um, where we've, you know, had to convert four cylinders to V8s and by uh, just, just experience alone, some of the things that has, you know, came about when I had, I had purchased, you know, quite a few Mustangs that have been converted and converted wrong, uh, converted right. Some of them you would never know. I've had them where they just, you know, they were just a complete shit show. And, you know, I want to bring that, you know, where this information is going to be really important, uh, especially in 2022 is, you know, when you're going out to buy a fox body or you're looking for a fox body or you're looking for something to build you know you know what you're looking at and it also going to be help for some of you guys who who want to who have a four cylinder or have an option to get a four cylinder maybe some input ideas and experiences that i've had with four cylinder fox bodies and the conversion itself so lots of information out there. there's a lot of content creators that have covered this very subject i mean there's um uh, just tons of information on the web as far as like, uh, you know, corral.net and stingnet and, and, you know, all Fords, all that stuff, you know, there, there's just places that you can find this information, but I figured I would share a lot of it right here right now in about a, you know, one hour, one and a half hour, you know, live stream. I figured it was a pretty good topic to, to, to talk about because there's a lot of information that we're going to put on this, this board and you can help me out. So let me go through the shout outs here what's going on big fox 302 cousin paul's in the house what's up cousin paul you weren't down at the uh, car show what's up stangman 78 trunk back jim uh troy mason it's good to see you good to see you so yeah troy mason says he's in the middle of a, a four to eight conversion right now yeah so before we get into it uh we did the pros and the cons of the last whiteboard we did was the explorer so if you haven't had a chance, you just now joined the channel, you're new to this whole live stream podcast thing, whatever you want to call it, because this is the type of thing that uh, is just as visual as it is audio. So, you know, if you were to go back through, I, I would uh, encourage you guys to watch the channel uh, or the live stream if you have time, because there's a lot of stuff we put on the uh, on the whiteboard um, that you can reference and stuff. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's pros and cons to uh, the GT40 stuff, and this is what we did last time. So... Uh, you know, obviously that's already been recorded and you can still uh, reference that here on the, uh, on the channel, but we're going to go ahead and race this stuff. I always like to kind of, uh, go back and, and, uh, you know, kind of reference the last whiteboard because last week we had talked about, you know, Mustang week and we talked about, uh, the updates on the 387 and I actually have more information to, for you guys on the 387 and, you know, cause I'm going to talk about it every week. I know you guys are, uh, some of you guys are very uh, interested in seeing what we do with that. We also have a couple other ideas with some of the other blocks that we have. Because um, we're going to actually create more than one 351 motor, even, even if we have to spray it down with WD and leave it sit on the stand. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's nice to have a motor uh, ready before you, uh, you know, if you ever need it. So. 
What's up, Dustin Russell? Jason Field, what up, man? It's good to see you, man. Number two, number three motor. Do the number 2.3s. Do 2.3s, man. <laughs> okay, so first things first. Talking about four cylinder to V8 conversions. Now, again, where's this where's this information even relevant in in the genre in the community? Actually, years ago, 10 or 15, 20 years ago, when Fox bodies were could be had for 500 bucks, you know, it, that, that time has passed, you know, and, and there used to be, I've, I've passed on so many really nice four cylinder convertibles, excuse me, four cylinder coupes, four cylinder convertibles, four cylinder hatchbacks, I could have got for like nothing. And, you know, it, it used to be kind of like a, like a frown down about like, hey, well, you know, your, your, your car was a four cylinder to V8 conversion, was it? And the first thing I think of when you think of, you know, a four cylinder to V8 conversion, you, you think of, you know, did they do it right? And I've actually bought cars to do that conversion to. And it's really, to be honest with you guys, there's really not a whole lot of difference. There's a lot of stuff that's different that you wouldn't know, the little knickknack stuff. And that's what I'm gonna go over with you today is I'm gonna teach you and I'm going to show you on this whiteboard pretty much everything that I know about a four-cylinder to V8 conversion that you might not know. And I've, I'm telling you, it'll it'll be something that you guys can reference over the period of time. If you happen to see a four-cylinder car, if you go to a V8 car, you want to pick up a parts car or pick up another roller or something like that, there's a couple things that you can see right off the jump if it was a four-cylinder or not. So first things first what's up handle motorsports good to see you that is my uh, sponsor of the channel it's good to see you repping the handle motorsports uh shirt tonight what what's happening chris gordon good to see you eric c you will need uh, yeah we're gonna get into all that so um first things first if you're going to buy a four-cylinder uh a mustang you don't even know it's a four-cylinder mustang we're gonna start with this because it's relevant and you have no idea like uh you know maybe somebody converted it maybe they didn't it might be carbureted whatever the the very first thing you need to know on this whiteboard is every four cylinder every, the eighth ladder over eighth character is e for v8s so you go look on the vin code eighth character over is a e for v8 cars Obviously, the uh, if it's a D, then it's a Cobra. Uh, good luck with that, because you probably won't find that. But if it was a four-cylinder, it would be an A or an M. I think the M started in 92, 91. So four-cylinder A or M. So you could actually look on the VIN code plate itself, and you could start there if you're actually – curious about whether you're buying a four cylinder or not um you know if you're if you're wanting to buy wanting to look at one most of the times at this point nobody's really trying to hide anything i mean there's a, a lot of other things that you can see on the car that would show that it's a four cylinder to v8 and there's nothing wrong with buying a four cylinder and converting it to a v8 or just buying a four cylinder that you just want to drive and maybe you do something a little bit different with. but you know, I wanted to start with that because there's a lot of confusion about it. The eighth character over is either is always an E if it's a V8 5.0 original car on the VIN plate. Again, D if it's a Cobra and four cylinders are A from 87 to I think 91, and then it's M 92, 93. So, yeah. So, anyways, uh, great topic. Even more uh, so in the times we are in, in the hobby. Correct. So that's the reason why we're going over this today. We're going over this today because in our hobby today, like my car behind me, it's seen its days. My black car, seen its days. I mean, we've been down the track in single digits and 10 second passes for years. So what does that mean for a four cylinder car? Okay, well, four cylinder cars, they don't have a lot of stretch, a lot of, uh, they don't have a lot of twist in them. Um, you know, there's, there's a big pros and cons to it all the way around, but there just wasn't enough power like the 2.3 in factory i'm not talking turbos and stuff there just wasn't enough power to to really hurt the unibody on it you know i mean over time and age you know that's that's subject to be argued about that's debatable all the way around right but 
V8s, you know, with the clutch dumps and the burnouts and, the, you know, racing, you know, it was, it, you know, it was used and abused a little bit more than a, than a force owner was, right? So that was always kind of the, 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 the caveat to putting a four cylinder into a V8 is you like, you started with a blank canvas that hasn't been abused. Does that make sense? And I'm giving a shout out to my man, Han, Andrew Hanlon and Hanlon Motorsports for giving me this idea for this topic, because he had been looking at a roller recently and he had, that's the, the exact same thing that he had said that we've been talking about for 20 years. This is the nice thing. Well, what's a, what's a big, a big plus about starting with a four cylinder con conversion or a four, four cylinder canvas is it was the, the car wasn't abused. I'm going to fill this whole thing up. Car wasn't abused. So that doesn't mean that all V8s were abused, guys. I, I'm just kind of, the whole topic is to converting a, v, a four cylinder over to V8. I'm just talking about right now why. You know, if you were going to start with a four cylinder uh, conversion. Now, the value part. Obviously, the value part plays a difference in this, right? Because if it's not an original V8 car, then it used to be that the value was just like, eh, you know, it's an old four-cylinder car. You know, it used to be like kind of frowned upon, but it's not no more. Because we live in a day and age now where Fox bodies are just getting hard to find, period, four-cylinder or V8. And using a four-cylinder base model as a, as, as a roller or as a build is actually a pretty smart idea, especially if you're going to do something a little, you know, a little crazy off the wall, like, you know, making X amount of horsepower, coyote swapping it, um, you know, putting, uh, you know, a turbo on it or a blower or whatever. If you're doing like a resto mod to it, it's not a bad idea. So the car, the, these cars weren't abused. The four cylinders weren't abused as much as the V8s. And, and, and uh, the funny part is, is the coupe, from what I remember, the coupe was sold as more in a four-cylinder form than it was V8 by far. So, so it's, it's definitely something to think about when you're starting with a blatant canvas on, on a Fox body. So uh, first two I can think of is rear end and interior. So let's, let's talk about that. Starting from the rear of the car. So they weren't abused. Um, the eighth letter over is in, you know, A or M. We're gonna go through this in the whiteboard. So very first thing, difference between, and there's a bunch of them. So I'm just gonna start randomly. I'm just gonna start from the back of the car. Um, as far as your bumpers and your trims and your headlights and your harnesses in the body, all of that stuff is the same. All of it is. Your glass, your trim, your trim around your glass or your mirrors. Um, Pretty much everything's the same. Uh, where you start getting a little bit of a difference is when you go under the car, even even the gas tank itself. The gas tank, because I'm pretty sure that the factory uh, LPH um, for you know the pumps on the V8 and the four cylinder were pretty much the same. I think they were 85 or 95. I can't remember the the, the LPH or, or whatever, but um, definitely uh, the tank, the hanger all that stuff, the plastic lines that are five sixteenths feet and quarter inch return, the plastic rubber lines that go up to the, to, to the, uh, to the fuel filter, all that stuff is the same where things start getting different on a four cylinder versus a V8. And what you need to do to convert is the, 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 the fuel lines for a, for a four cylinder went up the driver's side, whereas a fuel lines for, uh, a, a V8 car, went up the passenger side and followed the brake lines. So you would come out at the K member on two different spots on the, on the car. So if you were converting your four cylinder to V8, you would have to kind of rig up some sort of like a fuel system hose that would come off of your fuel rails on your passenger side on the V8, which we're all very familiar with. Now carburetor, we're not gonna talk about that just yet. You come down maybe uh, you know down the K member and maybe come over to the, to the two quick get dis disconnects. I think that are uh, right underneath of the, I think it's right under the, uh, the, the strut tower on the driver's side. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, the fuel, so the fuel lines, like the, the tank, the pump, the hanger, uh, the, the tank fill straps, the plastic, all that stuff's the same. None of that stuff's any different. The only thing that's different on the fuel system itself was the, 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 the hard lines themselves that are mounted to the body that take the plastic lines, which is 
basically exit, you know, fuel filter and uh, the feed line that comes back are, are, are in different spots. So Jason Fields, man, I appreciate your super sticker, man. Super chat. Thank you so much for donating to the channel, man. That's what it's all about, guys. I appreciate you guys when you guys, uh, you know, take care of the channel like that, man. It's, that's really cool of you, Jason. Jason's one of my, uh, my uh, largest contributors to the, uh, the channel, man. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, four bangers can get jacked up wrong and be all tore up. Okay. Uh, here we go. So, uh, we said the fuel, the hard lines, the fuel hard lines are different. So how do you fix this? Now I'm just going to use this board as, uh, this is going to be the four cylinder stuff. Okay. This is going to be the difference. So how do you fix the fuel hard lines? Um, to be honest with you, unless you're going to run an aftermarket fuel system with a sump and or a hat, you know, at that point, it doesn't matter what the hard lines look like. Cause like I said, they're five sixteenths feed and a quarter inch return. Uh, SN 95 stepped up their game and went three a speed in quarter inch return. So, you know, when you go into the 94, 95 V sixes and, and V eights, those are actually a larger feed line, but that's not what we're here to talk about. A seven to, to 93. Um, you, you would basically either have to run your own fuel lines or you would have to actually get them out of a V eight car. And they're actually not that hard to get out. Um, they, you know, you, you drill out a couple, you know, a couple rivets. If you can find a good V8 shell, I've, I've actually the, the the handful of cars that I've I've let go of in the past that were real that were clean underneath. I've actually got a couple sets of the actual hard lines, and you'd be crazy, you know, not to take them off if they're really clean. You know, don't cut them. You know, you just drill the little brackets out because the funny part is, is the bottom of the car, the floor pan itself, um, will. It didn't matter if it was four cylinder or V8 at that time when they were getting ready to put the the, the lines in. So it had uh, it had the brackets in in the, in the in the position where you you know the 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 hard line drills into the frame, like on on both sides. Does that make sense? So you could simply run your own, or you know if you're going to run a four cylinder to V8 conversion, if you happen to get lucky and find somebody who's got an actual V8 set of feed return lines. There's a kind of a pedo, like I said, because they're long and you know, they're, they're like what, you know, 16 feet long, 15 feet long, and they're not something that you can get very easily. So if I started with that, because I think that's one of the hardest things to convert on a four cylinder to V8 in factory form is the actual hard lines themselves. So I guess what you could do is, is run a couple of unions on a, on a set that might be cut in certain spots, but you know, I'm real meticulous when I'm taking my, uh, my, gas lines out feed and return i've even saved the ones from my black car and my white car that i've taken out so yeah um do you need to change the brake booster we'll get into that so the fuel hard lines probably probably the hardest i'm gonna put hard hardest to do because you just can't get that you can't just order it from like amazon you see what i mean so the fuel system is a great start on a fuel on a four cylinder conversion if you can get that knocked out right off the bat because it's just not easy to do. Um, like I said, you just can't get factory parts like you would just, you know, just get an engine and drop it in, right? So number four. <clears throat> now I'm I'm this is all information that's just kind of shooting from the hip a little bit. Um, we're gonna we're gonna stay at the axle. Obviously, you guys know that the 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 four cylinder came with a seven five axle. 7.5 axle came with a variety of gear sets, 355, 373s, 410s, but it was a smaller axle. It was a one wheel peel axle. And it was, you know, it, it just wasn't, it was kind of fragile, but obviously everybody knows, you know, axle is one of the main things that need to be replaced in the rear, right? But here's the caveat to all that. Axle also has a couple other fittings and a couple other things on there that a V8, an 8.8 has that's different than a 7.5. So, naturally outside of the actual axle itself all four link upper and lower control arms and sway bar all fit from a 7.5 four cylinder car to a v8 so you could take a v8 axle and stick it in your four cylinder car okay and you can just hook up the the, the current control arms and sway bar for that matter not have a problem <clears throat> where you start getting into where the real problem happens 
is on a four cylinder to V8. Um, hold on a second. Axle 7.5 to 8.8. So number five, where the actual problem happens on the axle is the brake lines. So like I was just telling you with the um, with the V8 brake lines, they both go down the, the, the passenger side. But the problem with the four cylinder uh, axle is it's got a, a breather tube, like where the breather, um, where the little breather is on an 8.8 axle that sticks out on the passenger tube of the V8. You know, you got your differential and you got your tube. There's a little breather cap. Always make sure that's clean, guys. Don't try to wrench that off without maybe putting a little heat to it because especially if it's seized up a little bit, uh, you know, you got to let your, 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 your axle tubes vent just like you do your T5s. You got to let them gears vent. So that's that's a maintenance thing that you should probably check on your 8.8 axle if you've already got an 8.8 axle, obviously, is you want to you want to check that vacuum and make sure that it's clean and, you know, and it's, and it's free flowing. But on a four cylinder, there's a tube about inch and a half, two inches long, where there's a block. That's where your distribution block is. And then of course it's a vacuum on top of that. And then you got the lines that run to the each drum. Okay, it runs over the axle to each drum. Whereas the V8 has the brake lines that actually come over to the transmission valley. And it and there's a little L block or whatever that's actually mounted to just above your differential. So there's a you know hard line to soft line connection there, you know what I mean. So the V8 and the four cylinder, if you're going to convert your four cylinder car, coupe, convertible, hatch, whatever, over to a V8, you're going to probably want to run a union there. So we're going to put number five as brake line, brake line um, district. Let's, let's go distribution block. It's basically the same thing. Um, well, the block is just a block on the on the on the four cylinder V8, whereas the 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 the, the factory V8 one, I, I have one sitting here. I think Cousin Paul was messing with it. It's it's there's a little block that sits right up in the in the transmission valley, right above your drive shaft, and there's a little soft line that comes down and mounts to the 8.8 in the front. Um, you have to basically, uh, if you're going to convert a four cylinder V8, this is what I suggest do it right run a union and run a line over to that block now you don't have it on your car factory for a four cylinder but the the area where you actually mount it where it's riveted to on a v8 is is still there there's actually a little spot weld spots like you could literally see how it would bolt up to that so you could literally just sheet metal screw the uh distribution block that you get for a v8 for, for a hard line a soft line brake line and you can just put a V8 one in your four cylinder car. So it's pretty easy. You got to run a couple feet of, uh, you know, extra brake line from a union because you're no longer going to the distribution block on the 7.5. You're going over to the V8 one. See what I mean? And, and that's a pretty easy fix. It's not, it's, it takes a little bit of a mechanics to do, but it's, it's, it's not that bad. It's kind of a PETA a little bit, but brake line distribution block is uh, kind of one of the things with the fuel hard lines. You got to be, you know, Got to be a little bit savvy about so. <clears throat> All right. SN95 Garage, man. I appreciate the super sticker, $6.99, man. Thanks for donating to the channel. Um, My first car was an SN95. Okay. I think I'm going to go force on a conversion. So, yeah. So, just like Handler Motorsports just said, staying at the axle, uh, the rear springs were different. Shocks were the same. Quads were the same. Quad mounts were the same. But, uh, you know, when you take the whole axle out, the 8.8, you need to put, you know, the, the, the different progressive rate or the different rated springs for GTs or, or, or V8s or whatever. Uh, four cylinders were definitely different. So, you know, the, the, the things you got going on in the back here, like I was talking about with the hard lines, you got the distribution block and you got the, the rear springs. So, so, like I said, shocks are the same. Um, they wouldn't be any different anyways, but um, uh, the rear springs. And like I said, we're starting from the rear of the, the, the car. We're going to start moving forward. The rear springs need changed. You know, where all this stuff really doesn't matter, I'm talking about doing this, you know, pretty much budget. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, I'm talking about doing this 
like if you basically had a V8 donor in front of you, this is the stuff you need to take from it. Um, that's that's the best information that that I can give you on on this right now. SNI five, appreciate you joining the channel membership, man. If you guys don't already know, check out that join button below. We do you know all this uh, information, and it's very very much appreciated. Uh, I do a lot of uh, talking in the members chat too. So um. Yes. So rear springs need change. So again, I'm going to keep going back and forth with, with, with what starting from the back of the car. So like all four cylinder models came in an LX form, obviously. I mean, minus the SVOs, I'm not talking about 86 and, and, and later or earlier. I'm talking about 87 and 93, because that's the genre that we're, we're focusing on. So all of them came in LX, you know, you convertibles did, you, you know, your, your, uh, your coupes did and your your and you know your hatchbacks so your hatchback wing would be the same your trunks are all the same all your hinges your glass your convertible top you know your body harnesses are all the same a lot of people don't know that it's just your harnesses inside of your car and we'll get to that because I'm, I'm moving forward to the front of the car you know your interiors all the same minus the seats they made a little bit of a different form to them so um I mean, how, how do I want to, how do I want to talk about this? Okay. So moving into the, the doors are all the same. The trim's all the same, the glass moving inside of the vehicle, a four cylinder car had different seats. They're called velour. It's a velour cloth seat. Um, you know, some of them had the leather. It depended on the option that the, that the person bought, but most run of the mill production four cylinders had a velour cloth. It's different than a tweed. The tweed cloth, if you ever hear Velour, V-E-L-O, was it V-E, is it V-E-L-O-U-R? Anyways, um, pretty much 87 up to 90. Uh, they started putting um, in, in the coupes. Now, actually, the V8 coupe in 1990 came with the Velour four-cylinder seats. A lot of people don't know that. 90 is kind of a like like a, a year by itself. It kind of had like all these different changes, and then they changed it again in 91. So 91, 92, 93 all the coupes that were V8 started getting the tweed cloth interior, whereas the 90 only V8 coupes all got velour regardless of what color it was. So in the interior, as far as your hatch panels, all your bracketries, your, your consoles, your door panels, your door panels, 87 and 90, 87 and 90 were different. They had a velour cloth that matched the seats. So, but the nice thing about the 87 and nineties is you were able to actually remove the insert and you could actually recover that with a uh, with a leather, or you could recover it with anything other than velour. You see what I mean? So you, you could actually physically change that. Whereas the seats, you didn't really want to mess with the, the the seats because they were different than the tweed cloths, and you didn't want to recover them unless that's something that you wanted to do. So moving to the interior, the seats, velour cloth. And the, ins the door panel inserts were only 87 to 90. We had the velour cloth insert. 91, they all moved to the vinyl where the insert didn't, didn't remove. So 90 was the last year. And door insert. So if you had an 87 to 90, like four-cylinder conversion that you were doing, um, and you wanted to make it, you know, you could, you could obviously buy aftermarket seats. Uh, you could rear seat delete. You can just leave the velour rear seats in it. Who cares? But, uh, the door inserts 87 to 90 were a dead giveaway. Um, cause they were tweed inserts for 87 to 90 GTs and, and 5.0s. So there was a little bit of a difference in the, inside the, the interior. Obviously the next thing I'm going to talk about is the cluster the cluster was definitely different. So. Um, number eight would be cluster. Now, the cluster speedo gear, speedo. Yeah. So, <laughs> one second, and I'll get to some. Uh, I'll get to some questions here in just a second. The speedometer. Okay. So, the speedometer different. What's your question here? Hey, question for anyone who's got experience using drop mounts on a regular 302 with stock K member. Will it still clear? I think it'll still clear. It depends on what your, your oil pan is. 
So the speedometer on all four cylinders were different than the V8 version. And the difference was the tachometer and the, the speedometer itself. Where that changed is the middle of 88. So 87 and early 88, GTs had the same speedometer that a four-cylinder did. It was an 85-mile-an-hour sp uh, speedometer. The TAC was 7K, though. So V8s had a 7,000 TAC, whereas a four-cylinder had a 6,000. Uh, 6, uh, 6, There's not 7,000 7, RPM TAC, not, not 7,000. Did, did I say dollars? Anyways, a 7,000 RPM TAC and 6,000 RPM tech, there was a difference. Now, if you were to stick a four-cylinder cluster in a V8, All right, so sorry about that. We back. We good? Every once in a while, my internet likes to go goofy sometimes. <clears throat> yeah, just like Mustang Chris was saying right there. <clears throat> Got a thumbs up? Good to go? Not fuzzy? Ready to go? Okay, so just like Mustang Chris was saying right there, I had to swap my tack and speedo when 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 I did my four cylinder conversion, 92 V8 into a four cylinder. Okay, so that's exactly what we're talking about. The speedometer is different, and so isn't the tack. You got a six K uh, tack on a four cylinder versus a seven K tack, and your speedometer on a four cylinder is 85 versus the 140. So. Now, you don't need to buy a cluster. If you can get the uh, if you can get the speedometer or the tachometer from a um, another like a V8 cluster, if somebody's selling a parts cluster or whatever, your gauges and everything will work just fine with whatever you have in your car. Um, you can actually take your your cluster apart and put those two in. You could put the the tach in and you could put the speedometer in. So you know, you could convert it to 140 or whatever. So that's one of the main, major things inside of the 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 uh, four cylinder itself. So, but outside of that, we good to go. I'm making sure I'm not I'm not getting a lot of chat. So I'm, I don't know if it's just lagging. <clears throat> but outside of that, um, the interior, you know, the seats, the inserts for those four years, uh, the, the cluster itself. Pretty much the same, even with convertibles, pretty much the same all the way around when it, when, when we're talking about dashes, consoles, um, you know, the, the carpets, there's there's nothing internally any different with wiring, uh, nothing with the, the dash harness is the same, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the body harness is the same, the door harnesses are the same, um, you don't have to mess with that stuff. You know, they, they might have like some of the some of the four cylinder cars might have the the, the delete the delete in it. Uh, what I mean by delete is they might have a lot of you might see a lot of crank windows in a four cylinder car, uh, especially in coupes, um, you know, which is, you know, you have different handles, too. So but that doesn't matter because most V8s were power, but some were a delete car, too. So. Uh, all right. Moving on. Trying to think. So as far as your sunroof, your trim, guys, four cylinders not much different than a V8. And everything that you guys, I'm telling you guys now, some of the things you might know, might not know, might know, whatever. You know, the main things here are on this board. Um, you know, moving forward, we're up to the fenders. Um, you know, obviously the cowls and the wipers are the same. It doesn't really matter there. Um, the fenders are the same. The spats are the same. Uh, when you start getting into your wheels now, uh, they didn't, I think, I think four cylinders from 91, 92, 93 were all a 10 hole design. So the spat 
the, the spat still changed, you know, like the 91 to 93 spat, it still changed, but your 87, I want to say 87 to 90 were a rubber wheel. So the wheel itself was different. So obviously you wouldn't be running with the factory four cylinder wheels if you were doing a conversion, but need mind you that the rubber wheels, great for derby cars, um, the wheels were different. 87 to 91, and in 92, 93 was 10 holes. Whereas the all the V8 cars got ponies in 90, excuse me, <laughs> 91 to 93, got all got ponies and stuff. So, <laughs> so what else we got? I think we swapped the tack in an 89. I think the conversion isn't there to select or same. What do you say? I think we swapped the tack on my 89 for the conversion. Isn't there a selector on some tax? I don't think so. Uh, even clean, uh, clean four cylinder cars are, are coming up in pretty good value. So <laughs> why no love for the V6? Because there was no V6 is 87 to 93. So number 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 nine was the wheels so we're going to start getting into the brakes now so obviously the 7.5 has a different brake setup right matter of fact i think that i think the drum was still on nine inch regardless but we're going to go to the brakes since we're at the wheels brakes the spindles the calipers <clears throat> But front brakes, front brakes, the spindles, the calipers, the hoses, hell, even the brackets, even the uh, frame brackets, I call them. They're little frame brackets that mount the hard line to soft line for the uh, caliper, frame brackets. All that was different, all of it. Your strut, your, your okay, yeah, so spindles, calipers, the front springs, all different rates so that's the that's a big one right there so you're you know you're again your your front brakes your spindles your calipers your hoses your front springs your frame bracket that holds the hard line the soft line all that stuff needs to be changed when you're you don't have to change it but guys if you're going to do a good conversion to a v8 that's definitely something that you want to change i've seen people go pretty fast on some stock you know fox four cylinder brakes sometimes they work Sometimes they don't, but this is probably one of the bigger problems that you get. So when you convert, when you convert to a V8, one of the best things you could probably do is just go ahead and get the K member. Go ahead and get the tube of the K member that you're going to get anyways, get the coilover set, be done with it. The nice thing about coilover set is that it's adjustable. You get the adjustable shock. I, I, I do prefer that. And you can just, uh, you, you can adjust your 14 or 14, 175 or, you know, 12, 150, whatever spring you choose, you know, you can actually change. You get rid of all this problem by just switching over to UPR or, you know, AGE, AJE or, or uh, e even a QA1. It doesn't matter. You, you, you eliminate all that stuff. So that's a big problem. Um, you know, naturally, what would your car look like if you converted V8 to four cylinder? And you didn't mess with the the springs in the back and you didn't mess with any of the front stuff that i'm telling you here your car would look like like an old hot rod like it would be the weight from the v8 in the front would squat the car because the rates are different on the springs and the, you know and obviously it's a dead giveaway with the with the calipers or whatever uh typically it looked good with a 302 gives a nice drop <laughs> right so that's what i was just talking about kyle now that may not be for everybody now, also, I've heard that four cylinder springs are good drag racing springs, or is it the rears? So that's that's hearsay. So I, I'm not going to say that's what you should do, but I want to say that the four cylinder rear springs are good for drag racing for weight transfer. That's an old drag racing myth. Does that make sense? So keep that in mind. Good. I'm going to put that here. Rear springs change. Uh, good for racing? Question mark. Can't even read that. I need to. I need to like make bigger. <laughs> What's up, Lamar? Do you have to reinforce the torque boxes? You do not. 
Uh, but if you're already going to be doing a blank canvas on your Fox body and you plan on making some power or going turbo or whatever swap you do with the engine, whether it be 351 or, or Coyote or whatever, like some of the very first things that you should do to your four cylinder conversion is reinforce it. Um, it's already nice in, in you know, the, the unibody is nice and strong. It's not been twisted a lot. It's not been abused. It's not been beat to shit. So why not go ahead and stiffen the whole chassis up with, with a set of, of good subframes, full length subframes, and, and reinforce the torque boxes. Because at this point, it's literally like, I mean, even if it's got 100,000, 200,000, you know, 200,000 like miles on it, you know, it's still got a pretty good unibody, you would think. So War Admiral's in the house. What's up, War Admiral? I used four cylinder springs on my 89 drag racing. It worked well. That's what I thought. You guys get a chance to check out War Admiral on Instagram. It's good to see you, man. All four cylinder, all four springs, 50, 50 shocks, 730. So you're telling me that, uh, Adventure Super Dave, you're telling me that that's what you ran is all four cylinder springs? <clears throat> Appreciate you, Lamar. It's good to see you. Lamar is actually doing uh, a, um, what do you call those things? The, the, the little, is a caricature? Is that what you call them of the, of the cars? He's doing a couple for us. Anyways, so like I said, brakes, spindles. This is a this is a big pile of money right here. Like if you just did this like one at a time, this is just a big pile of money. You know, what's my suggestion for number ten? Front brakes, spindles, calipers, hoses, whatever. At this point, I would definitely SN95 convert uh, with the or 96 to 04, whatever. You would want to buy the caddy brakes. Uh, you would want to get the matching rotor with the spindle. You know, make sure the hub is good. Uh, get the QA1 coilovers with the QA1 K member and, 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 and A arms. Spend the money, be done with it. Uh, at that point, you're going to have to change the brake lines anyways. So you could run the uh, Willwood adjustable proportioning valve. And you could leave your rear's drum if you want, because the Caddy four piston Brembo brake will stop the car well into the nines, if not further. So I need some spacers. For a 93 four cylinder notch to fit 275 rear, which is the best spacers and specs. I always like the bare products. I used to mess with those cheap. I don't mess with those cheap spacers anymore. I don't mess with anything because they're not, they're just not machine. You know, I mean, you get what you pay for and stuff like that. Like the bare stuff that I got, uh, I think I got from uh, Summit Racing. Uh, they're a little bit pricey, you know, 30 or 40 bucks, but they're worth, they're worth the money all day long. Walmart. Yeah, I've done tax, boost gauges, fuel pressure. Yeah, so moving on, this is your biggest hurdle right here outside of the gas lines and brake lines. Um, you know, when you start, let's talk about harnesses now. When you're converting a four-cylinder to V8, you got to talk about computer. You got to talk about harnesses. So a lot of you guys might say to yourself, well, I'm just going to put a holly in or I'm just going to, you know, put a painless wiring in. Listen. The four cylinder, it doesn't matter if it's convertible, notchback, or hatchback, it doesn't matter. The four cylinder body itself, all the harnesses are the same. Your fuel pump harness is the same, which is the little one in the back that goes to your fuel pump. Your body harnesses, your taillight harnesses, the body harness is all one harness, and it's like as long as the car. So it, you know, it covers your speakers in the back, it covers your, your hatch light, your hatch lock. Uh, your trunk light, your trunk lock, because the coupe one's a little bit different than hatch, but it's the same harness. Um, it covers your third brake light and or your wing light on your LX uh, on hatch that, ha you know, because the, the convertibles didn't have that. Um, you know, the convertible body harness obviously is its own animal because it's got the relays for the top and stuff like that. But it's it, and same thing applies. Your, all your harnesses are the same inside the body. You don't have to mess with none of them. You know, you're, you're all, it's, it's all the same gauges. So if you switch your car over to a V8, and you go to a bigger pump in the back, it's the same wiring, it's the same gauge as you would in a V, it would be on a V8 or a GT or whatever. So dash harness, all the same. There's nothing different between a four cylinder and V8 dash harness. Uh, like I said, the, the door harnesses with the locks and the switches and the power, whatever, don't mess with any of that. You don't have to mess with any of that. Matter of fact, the, the harnesses that you need to change, if you're going with a fuel injection setup, now carburetor is a little bit different, I'm not a subject matter expert with converting a Fox body to a carburetor, but it's not 100% all that difficult. 
there's just a couple wires that you need. There's plenty of information out there. I'm sure if you guys can comment below if you're going to watch this, you know, the live stream, check, you know, check out the comments below. I'm sure somebody with a carburetor can, you know, that's that's pretty fluid with, you know, switching a, uh, a Fox body over to a carburetor could, could chime in and tell you what, where to where to tap in at as far as wires are concerned. But as far as harnesses are concerned, um, we're going to put wiring here. Um, your engine harness. Um, computer, let's go. Um, ECU engine harness, the ECU itself, the front headlight harness. And the O2 harness. So these are your, your main harnesses that are an issue with a four cylinder car. You have to change your ECU and engine harness, obviously, your ECU itself, obviously, and your front headlight harness and O2 harness. So that's pretty much uh, injector harness, obviously, too, because you can't use, you know, a four cylinder injector harness with a V8 car. So pretty much most of the harnesses that you have to deal with on a four cylinder conversion are underneath the hood. Matter of fact, I don't even think you can retain any of them. Yeah, injector mass air harness or speed density um o2 i think the ac harness and the and the smog harness if you're still running it i think those are the same um but the whole the front headlight harness is different because the head the, the alternator plug on the four cylinder harness is on the driver's side whereas the 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 v8 alternator plug for the v8 car is on the passenger side so that that is a different harness so Stiplers makes an awesome subframe connector. Okay, buy a Rec 5.0 and convert. That's how I mine started. That's you know, and that's where we're at right now, Frank. That's like I'm great. It's great that you brought that up because that's the reason why I wanted to make this live stream. I wanted to fill it full of information in a short period of time. So if somebody actually wants to learn how to convert their car four cylinder V8, these are the things you need to look for. And you know, like I was just telling you with the wiring harness. The harnesses themselves, you know, inside the car, outside the car, the only ones that are that are that are different from a four cylinder to a V8 are the ones I just mentioned. The ECU and the ECU harness, the pretty much everything under the hood, minus the O2 and the AC harness. Or excuse me, minus the the smog in the AC harness, which is those little small little extension pieces from the engine harness. So so I definitely hope this guy this is helping some of you guys. Um one thing I did forget on the brakes, brake line distribution in the back. Uh, one of the major things, okay, so I'm, I'm going to get situational with you. You're, you're, you're doing a four-cylinder to V8 conversion, and you, you've you changed your brakes and your spindles and your calipers, and, and whether you got something secondhand or got something off the stock V8 car, not a big deal. The, the one thing you're going to want to change is the brake booster. Brake booster is probably one of the, 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 the most, the main components to, uh, converting a V8 over because, and it's one of the first things that I look at when I look at a roller, when I look at a, uh, a Fox body that I want to buy as a parts car or a car I want to restore. As soon as the hood pops, I look at the brake booster because the brake booster and the vacuum block will tell you, will literally tell you because the, the vacuum block on a four cylinder looks like a racing Christmas tree. It's got, it's like, um, it's, it's vertical and it's, you know, it's got the, 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 the ports, sideways whereas the uh the v8 one is horizontal and the ports are aiming down and obviously the brake booster on a four cylinder is smaller and more round like a disc whereas the um the v8 one is just more like a big oval so now would be the good time if you're doing a blake canvas with a with a, with a v8 conversion to a from a four to from a four cylinder to a v8 conversion uh you know what i suggest you do save a little bit of money you know, get, get your, get your front suspension set up right off the bat. You know, the K member is going to save weight. The control arms are going to save weight. Find yourself a, a set of cheap SN95 uh, spindles uh, or, you know, 96 to 04 or whatever you do. If you do 96 to 04, make sure you get a bump steer kit. I would probably suggest a bump steer kit anyways. Um, you can still use, I think the racks are different. I take that back. I, I do think the racks, somebody chime in here because I'm pretty sure that the V8 rack and the four-cylinder rack had a different ratio. 
I used the stock fuel pump wires for the carb setup and ran a Holly electric pump in a Melodin drop. Okay. I have a 91 hatch with a Sunroom V8 car. I'll sell it to you. We're good. I pulled the headlight harness and engine ECU from my parts car. Okay. Really appreciate this video. I'm, I am converting a, yeah. So a lot of this stuff is kind of like, I don't, I this is stuff can't slam into like an eight minute video. This sort, this sort of video of me explaining even this stuff at a faster speed would take 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, so I'm trying to go through each thing individual with you in hopes that somebody along the line, this will help somebody or this will help you when you're going to buy a four cylinder Mustang, which we'll talk about here in a minute. So, <clears throat> so, so that's what I thought. I, I'm pretty sure that the rack, steering rack is a different ratio. That's some stuff that, you know, being around Fox buddies for a long time that you, you might miss out on and you might not know when you're converting your Fox body over. I actually, this is one of the last things I, I, I figured out when we were doing a four cylinder conversion years ago. I'm probably converted about 10 or 15 of them. And, you know, you take shortcuts here and there, right? And, you know, rack can be one of them, but the ratio is different from a V8 versus a four cylinder rack. So, boom, good. Uh, four cylinder rack, different ratio, more turns, easier to turn. So you say it's more, you know, this isn't, this would be a good time. This is my suggestion. If you've got a blank canvas V8 and you got some money set aside and you don't really know what to do with it just yet. Say you got a blank canvas, okay? I got a coupe, four cylinder, whatever. And it's solid as a rock, but it's a shell, whatever, and I'm just starting. First things I would buy, obviously, is put, I'd get subframes connectors on it. It's kind of hard to put subframe connectors on a car that doesn't weigh full weight yet. And so you might want to do that last, but I would still get them. Um, you could do the torque box reinforcements. That's also something you probably want to do when it's full weight, but I don't think that really matters all that much. Anyways, I would move straight to the front. I would, I would tear all the K member and everything out. Uh, brake booster, um, like we were just talking about, the steering rack, you can get a Cobra steering rack. Am I right? get a Cobra steering rack, even an OE replacement one, change the bushings on it, go to poly drop mount bushings, whatever, just in case you put an oil pan in that's too big, like a V8 995 deck or whatever. Um, coilovers, not, you know, the SN95 spindles, caddy brakes. I mean, I can go on and on, but I would spend that money right there, bam, and be done with it. Because at that point, your whole brake and front suspension with the wheelwood adjustable, the bigger brake, uh, brake booster, you got all the brakes you need to go 160 miles an hour if you ever reach that. You got all this the lightened parts in the front that are adjustable, you know, the the, the, the camber plates, you know, just that's where I would spend the money. And you can always obviously figure out what engine plan. You can just put a stock motor trans in it and be done with it, right? But at least you're building the chassis to be able to support that. You ain't got to put a cage in it or anything yet. But I'm just saying that's kind of one of the, you know, that adds a lot of value to your four cylinder conversion because if i seen that i would be like wow i mean that's not a four cylinder no more <clears throat> i believe they did have a 15 to one and the other was 20. okay so i i want to say one of the mods one of the mods for the steering rack is a cobra rack am i right yeah the four cylinder k member the factory k member will, will fit a v8 it's just the, the 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 motor mounts are different so but that doesn't really matter but I want to say that Cobra is a, is a cheap uh, mod for that ratio. So that would be um, very important to me if I had a, like, a, I have a four cylinder coupe over here. You guys see me bring it in. I got it for like 1500 bucks. I already knew it was a four cylinder coupe. As soon as I walked up to it, I'll, as soon as you opened the hood, I looked at the brake booster. I seen it was four cylinder. I didn't care. At this day and age, it doesn't matter if the coupe or the hatch is a four cylinder. If it's clean and it's not been beat and it hasn't been wrecked, buy it. I mean, that roller and shell could be the next donor for a V8 that's ragged out, rusted, beat to shit, that has good parts in it still. And you could take all those stock parts that we're talking about right here off of a V8, bolt for bolt, and, and mount them all up to your, your, your coupe or, or hatchback or, or whatever. So, you know, you could take a, a donor. Uh, a donor car, and then you can make another car better. 
Cobra rack is even tighter ratio. I use the V8 one. Okay. <clears throat> yes, there is a such thing as a Cobra rack. Yeah, I, I'm just, what I was talking about gearhead is I think this is a, a, a cheap upgrade. Like you can put in, you're at the point now to where you can change your, your, your rack at this point in, in your steering rack. So you, when you, when you change your steering rack, you can just go ahead and switch over to a Cobra rack. <clears throat> What's up your head. It's good to see you, man. So, uh, moving on as far as headlights, front bumpers, bumper support brackets, hoods, uh, all your insulations. Your, you know, your, your, your fender well liners, your, your, your spats, anything exterior, all that stuff is the same, obviously. Most of us already know that. But again, I'm just doing this live stream. So, you know, you guys that, that might need help, uh, you know, along the way, you know, in, in converting your four cylinder, whether it's convertible hatch or coupe over to a V8, these are some of the things you need to look for. So um, definitely, I don't think I'm missing anything. I think brake booster, I didn't put brake booster on there. But we'll add that here, even though uh, it should have been on number 10. We'll go with uh, number 13, brake booster. And a good option for a brake booster, you can stick a factory one in there. But at this point, you should probably go ahead and stick a Cobra one in there. Because if you're going to end up doing the big upgrades that I was just talking about in the front with the, <laughs> with the, uh, with all the suspension and, and K-member or whatever, um, brake booster would, uh, you know, definitely be okay at that point. You know what I mean? Cause you're going to do a, um, um, I, I like the Willwood adjustable. So, cause it adjusts the, 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 uh, you know, it, it, you can still run the, the, the drums in the back and still be okay with the Brembo's in the front. Cause you know, the Brembo's are definitely a, a cheap upgrade. So can't wait for the budget 387 stuff. Okay. So let's talk about that. We're about an hour in. What you know about that four banger T5? Okay, so obviously outside of the engine, um, you, if you stick a V8 engine in there from a factory, um, like just whatever, a factory, another Fox body or whatever, it's all the same. Uh, you, you just set it in there. As far as the, the, the T5, the four cylinder T5 is different than the V8. It will mount up to a V8 bell housing, no problem. Keep in mind that the four cylinder transmission is like a 397 first gear. So it's going to wind out real quick with a set of gears in the back of your new 88 that you just put in your four cylinder. So will it get you by? Sure. But uh, is it going to break? Yes. A lot of people claim that their four cylinders have been through a bunch of years of, of abuse or whatever. And that's good. And I've seen them last just as long. But, you know, eventually, just like everything else, it's probably the smallest gear ratio of them all when it comes to, and the size of the gears are physically smaller as well. So we've mentioned that on the channel. So anyways, uh, adventures with super Dave, man. I appreciate the $20 super sticker guy. Thanks for supporting the, the channel and, and the things that we do here, man. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, the drive shaft, uh, four cylinder drive shaft. So let's go ahead and put that on there. Uh, Hamlin did say the transmission. So we're going to say the transmission, even the auto is different. Trans are different. Obviously, engine, engine's different. None of that's really convertible uh, in drive shaft. Pretty much your whole drive line. Throw it away? Nope. Don't throw shit away. Uh, Y'all don't know that. Don't throw shit away. Somebody somewhere needs these parts that you're taking off that four cylinder. Anyway, so moving on. I don't think I've missed anything, have I? Input shaft is smaller, right? Yes. So the input shaft on a T5 four-cylinder transmission is smaller than a V8 one. Uh, so you have to run a different pilot bearing. If you do decide to use a T, you could use the T5 in a pinch. Uh, if you put the V8 engine in, you can use a T5 in a pinch, but you got to grab the pilot bearing from an 83084. Okay, I'm going to put it right here. 8384 diesel Ranger. You're all like, what? Yeah. Diesel Ranger. So there you have it. If you're gonna run the T5 transmission from a four cylinder. You got you still gotta get the V8 bell and the 10 and a half inch clutch and the 10 and a half or or the the, the, the flywheel, whatever. You can buy all that stuff aftermarket anyway. But the 8384 diesel ranger pilot bearing fits in the um, 
the OD of the input of a four cylinder. So that's what you would put in back of the crank to cheat that. Um, the drive shaft you could actually use as well. I wouldn't suggest it, but you drive shaft you can actually use as well in a pinch. So that's kind of one of the cheater things. Outside of the exhaust, you know, <laughs> the exhaust obviously is different, you know, so. I uh, need a different pilot bearing. Yeah, I just said that, Harley Davidson. Auto shifter is different as well. That is correct. So on auto cars, good one. Let's keep them coming. AOD shifter is different. So you would definitely need to change your AOD shifter. I want to say, isn't the isn't the factory V8 one? Well, I thought the factory V8 one was was one two drive overdrive. Am I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong. One two drive overdrive. One two overdrive. Or instead of being one D overdrive, I don't know. I have to check into that, but I know that they're, they're different. They're, the shifters are different. So good calling out. What trans hump is different also? There's the, 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 the trans, you know, you're talking about the, the, the transmission uh, cross member. They're all the same. No. Good call. They are not. They are not the same. <laughs> See, this is why we, we do this together. Good job. Good job. Uh, cross member is different. So trans mission cross member good job completely forgot they are different who said that good job frank big shout out to you bro car insurance is cheaper <laughs> yeah that's definitely one of them uh you definitely uh oops there it is what trans hump is different that's correct so wasn't the joint size different between the drive shafts? No, um, the drive shaft itself was different. Oh, no, Frank Rizzi, the, the actual transmission drive shaft, or excuse me, the transmission cross member is different. Uh, the hump inside, are you talking about the hump for the, 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 the floor pan? I don't think they were any, they, they weren't any different. So that not that I remember. I don't ever recall a four cylinder transmission hump being different than a V8 one. Uh, the only hump that's different is the shifter hole where the, the the little pan that you put you could change the auto to five speed. So I mean correct me if I'm wrong. I mean I've never messed with the tunnel. But I don't think the tunnel's any different. At least I haven't had an issue with it when I was doing a conversion, what, what would be different about it? Cause I'm pretty sure that if they, if they hard mounted the, if they have all the amenities for a V8 and a four cylinder underneath of the car, then most likely the floor pans and, and the transmission Valley hump would all be the same as well. Cause I mean, I don't know if you know, like I was talking about earlier, the, the, the brake, the fuel, the fuel line, hard line and the brake line, hard line distribution blocks are all in the same place on four cylinder and V8. Uh, the fuel pumps are pretty much the same. Oh, front sway bar. Good call. So rear sway bars are the same, V8 four-cylinder. Front sway bar, which I usually take off, is different. It's smaller. Good call. See, I tried to shoot this from the hip, and I'm missing some of them. That's what. That's why we have good uh, live streams, so we can share all this information. So that is correct. Who said that? Front sway bar. Good call. Mine didn't have a rear sway bar. So um, when you're converting over to a V8, you can use the rear sway bar. That's what I'm saying. There's still amenities in the control arm for the two holes to mount it. So the, the V8, there was no, yeah. My bad. Right. We already talked about that, Bruce. That was like one of the first ones. Axle 7.5 to V8, 8.8. So give me some more, guys. What am I missing? Good call on that, man. Whew. Horns the same. Dash is the same. Coil. Starter. 
starter wires. Hmm. Like I said, the fuel lines, the fuel lines are all the soft line and the hard lines. So soft lines are at the end of the hard lines for the quick disconnects. All those are different. Hmm. Only auto to five speed tunnels are different. Right. And you're talking about the hole where the shifter's at. Yes. That's T5 or four. That, that, that's a body thing. That's not a car thing. Hmm. <clears throat> So the radiator and fans are different. That we could put that. So if you got a running four cylinder, you can still use your radiator, but your fan on a good one. Uh, the radiator and fan are different. Fan is actually an electric fan, whereas the V8 one is a, a pump driven, or not pump, but uh, pulley driven. Yeah, we already talked about interior door panels, Super Dave. That uh, was part of the velour cloth and door inserts. But that was only 87 to 90, need mind you. 91 to 93, they changed everything to vinyl. It was just all one piece. And they had map pockets. So I'm trying to think what else. This is good information. We're about an hour and six minutes in. And this is stuff. We'll go back over this real quick right before we close the uh, live stream. Um, guys, I, I'm going to be honest with you and, and I'll, and keep hitting me up in chat. If it's something I might've missed here, I don't know if you can see the board real clear. I need to maybe fix that right bigger, put the board up. I don't know. Anyways, this is the actual slick we, ra we raced on on Wednesday. <laughs> um, if you guys can get a four, listen at this day and age, guys, Fox bodies are getting to the point that they're, they're pricey. Okay. Um, back in the day. Back in 2000, 2005, uh, early, late 90s, when you could start converted a V8, or excuse me, a four cylinder over to V8, kind of didn't have its, it didn't really carry its value. Because at that point, you kind of wondered, well, did they do it right? Did they do all these things on your checklist? You know, it's, it's very time consuming to do it right. It's money, you know, it's outside of just getting a, you know, Fox body that's already a V8 and you didn't have to do all this stuff, kind of made it a PETA. But Along comes all these aftermarket parts that you can buy that pretty much takes care of most of this list and upgrade your car from even if it was a V8, kind of makes it worth doing. So having a nice, clean four-cylinder car as a canvas is not a bad start. If you go out there, you can't find a V8. And that's the reason why I titled it the way I did. If V8s are getting hard to find and they're starting to disappear and they're just shelled out or rusty or hit or whatever, find yourself a good four-cylinder car to start with. 87 to 89, 87 to 90, to, for that matter, they just made a boatload of co coupes. I mean, there's a boatload of those four-cylinder notchbacks out there, or should be at least, because that's like the most, uh, they sold the most notchbacks, I think, in 87, 88, 89. So that's where you'd probably find a lot of them if that's what you're trying to do. And at this point in day and age, who really cares if it's a four-cylinder conversion? Because there's so many different aftermarket parts out there to be had and so many different engine swaps and transmission swaps and, and fuel cells and, and interior, whatever, you can buy everything for Fox bodies, which makes it one of the best cars to own and one of the best cars to invest in because it's literally, you know, a, a modern day supercar <laughs> sort, of, sort of. I mean, I don't want to call it a supercar because that's a tough label to give it, but, you know, it's probably one of the most modified and, you know, one of the most drag raced and one of the most, you know, well sought after vehicles, you know, in, in America today. And it shows the biggest difference to feeling you get when you hit the accelerator. That's, that's a good one. Clutch pedal assembly. I didn't really see much different in the clutch, the, the, the clutch pedal assembly. I think what you're trying to, what you're saying is some of the earlier models had the longer clutch, clutch arm or the pedal arm. Is that what you mean? What's up? Partly cloudy 420. Exhaust hanger on the rear of the tailpipes, right. But there's amenities. So we'll put that, Frank. Um, there's amenities still there to mount the, uh, the, the like on the tailpipes on a dual exhaust are like right at the end of the frame rails, right underneath the, uh, the quarter panels, right under the quarter panels where they were like to rust out or whatever. But on a four cylinder, there's only one. And they're different, like where you don't, you, you, they're, they're there. The amenities are there. There's just the mounts aren't there. You know what I'm saying? So. We'll say, we'll say exhaust mounts, exhaust mounts and what? Uh, hangers, hangers and hangers. 
plus hangers. You know, I mean, in Fox bodies are actually getting to the point now where, you know, taking a four cylinder and properly converting it to a V8 would still be worth its weight in gold anyway. So like I said, there's not many people who's going to care that much at this point, especially if it's done right. Nobody cares until you do the swap right. Between uh, space between pedals. The bracket on the gas pedal to mount the throttle cable. Okay, so yes, good one. The accelerator cable is longer on a V8. That is correct. So that would be something that you would have to change because, you know, obviously the V8 one, the throttle body is on the passenger side. So that's a good one. And that's kind of, you know, outside of, you know, the, the, the clutch cable. So let's go with throttle cable, Excel cable, and clutch cable are both different. Sweet. Boom. All right. <clears throat> so as you guys see behind me, I got my black car up on the NVXs. I don't know if I'm too sold on those. I thought they were going to be fire on the car, but I really kind of like the old Cobra R wheels or the Cobra reps that I had on there. They were deep dish and they were bigger. They had a bigger footprint in the back. And I really like those black NVXs on my white car anyway. I see steering uh, linking under hood different. Is the steering linking, you're talking about the, 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 the rack itself or are you talking about the knuckle? The knuckle would be the same. Yeah, I've done it. I shot all that from the hip, Chris. So, you know, I know I was missing the sway bar. I actually was a little surprised that I missed that one. Sitting fat on them. <laughs> yeah, I mean... They look all right, but they look better on my, I think they look better on my white car. They stance out better. It is what it is. So anyways, um, yeah, I mean, unless you guys got something else here to put on this whiteboard, this is pretty much what we got. I'm proud of you guys, man. You guys came through in the end, reminded me about the clutch cable, the Excel cable, and the exhaust mount's a decent one, the rad fan. Obviously, the rad itself is obviously, I think, a one core. I want to say that the the, the four cylinder cars are one core, whereas the factory V8 ones are two cores. Is that right? <clears throat> so, I definitely agree with uh, this. Is pretty much 99.9% .9 of it, or at least anything that matters. So, we'll go through this real quick, and then we'll talk about a couple other things. We'll talk about 387 one more time, or whatever this for this stream. So again, you know, if you're getting a four cylinder conversion, you're going to buy a car or you're trying to buy a roller or whatever, the, uh, the first thing you should look at is the brake booster. The brake booster is smaller. Um, you can tell if it's a car, a V8 or V8 car, if it's an E as the eighth character over. So like an 87 car would be a one FA BP four, two E like the eighth character over all V8 were E the D was the Cobra and the four cylinder was a or M. So, um the cars you know the nice thing about the four cylinders is they weren't abused so they were a good canvas to start with uh fuel hard lines and soft lines were different from the tank all the way to the front however the tank and the, the hat and the soft lines were all the same in the rear of the car axle obviously was different seven seven five to eight eight uh the brake line distribution block where the brake lines mounted on the axle were different from the eight eight to seven five so you have to actually do some work uh, you have to run fuel lines. Did I, did I say that? You have to run fuel lines from a V8. You guys see it right here. There's just a lot of information. I'm not going to go over this again. I mean, we, you know, we went through a lot. I'm proud of you guys for 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 chiming in. Um, just there's just so much stuff, little knickknack stuff when converting a V8 over to four cylinder, <clears throat> and in most of it, if not all of it, is stuff that you don't even really see. So. If you can get a blank canvas, if you can get a four cylinder car and it's rust free, it's accident free, and you can get it for a good price, even if you're not going to use it, get it, make sure it doesn't go anywhere like a junkyard or, or, or get scrapped or whatever. So definitely appreciate all you guys for putting this information in. On my 93 four cylinder, it had a Motorsports three core. Somebody must have changed it, right? Uh all right, Sugar, I appreciate the the the, uh, the the super chat, my man. Thank you for donating to the channel. So 
387. So what's going on in the channel now? And we can continue with this. If you guys think of something that we need to add to this list, I will do so. Um, what's going on with the 387? The 387 right now is being cut in the deck at the machine shop. The, the, the decking, the, the, the deck of the motor is getting cut. It's in the, it's in the, it's in, it's being washed right now. I think it is. So the deck is cut and it's ready to be, and it's flat. I don't think we had to cut a whole lot out of it to keep it straight. Um, the nice thing is, is uh, we're going to be making a video with the cylinder heads, and I'm going to show you the the decking of the block, and I'm going to show you the parts that we have over there. Uh, I'm going to show you where we're at next with it. Um, it's not something that is on me for the most part, as it is on the machine shop. Now, as you guys already know, you know people are backed up. So, I mean, even my man Dave, Dave over there, he's trying his best to get caught up. Uh, I have a set of aluminum heads he's got to finish as well. So I do appreciate you guys being patient with that. The 387, if it were me and I had the work, I'd already have it done and probably running right now. But Dave's, you know, he's a one man band over there for the most part. Well, he's got his help from some of the guys there, but it's still a tough, it's, it's still a tough setup. <clears throat> so 387 is, it's coming. Uh, we got the uh, cylinder heads. We're going to be doing a video on with the showing you the deck of the block and the uh, and, and the parts that we uh, that we bought. Uh, at that point, as soon as we're done washing it, which I think he's finished with it, I can you know that's coming this week. So just so you guys know, that's coming this week. So what do we have coming as well this week? Is we fixed the black fox. You know, you see it's not over here on the list. The, the lift is uh, kind of a you know, this, this car has been sitting on the lift for about a month. We had a couple of major issues happen, not major, but major to me. Um, we had to fix and we did take it down the track this past Wednesday. So I got a little bit of the video. If you guys like that track stuff, make sure you comment and let me know, uh, you know, if, if maybe I could change the format up a little bit. You want to, you want me to make the track video shorter. I like to vlog the track because it's more of an experience. It's like a friends and family thing to me now. I got a lot of, you know, I got a lot of guys that race with that I can, you know, I consider good friends of mine. And obviously I raced with cousin Paul and, and Sandy, his wife, you know, big shout out to them. So, you know, I, if you guys enjoy that sort of stuff, let me know. Uh, what we got? Uh, NJC, man, I appreciate the uh, $5, <laughs> $5 super sticker, man. Thanks for donating to the channel. I appreciate you. What heads are you using, Neo? So um, I'm going to give you guys a little bit. Uh, obviously, we're pretty deep here in the live, live stream, so I'm not really giving away information, but I'll give you some. Um, we have two sets of heads. We have a set of Windsor heads um, that are 194 valve, and we have a set of, uh, I would go get them for you, but they're cast iron. So I'm not going to be using aluminum heads. We're going to use the cast iron stuff that we got. Now, the one set is 202 valves, which means that we have to notch the pistons. But first of all, we got to check the piston the valve clearance. So no lift shifting that TKX, bro. That's right. That's right. We uh, we actually had a chance. We went against a couple of uh, vehicles this past week at, at the Wednesday night grudge night, and we had some, we had some good times. Uh, you guys, you have to just wait for that video to see what we actually got lined up against. But uh, <laughs> you'll love it. <laughs> um, what we got? What did he say? What did? Hell yeah. So. Moving on, uh, the ones you found in the coupe. Yeah, so that's the ones we're going to use, um, the 202 Windsors. Now, I was told that those Windsors are some pretty badass cast iron heads for being cast iron. So we're going to go ahead and rock them for sure. Um, I think that's what we're going to run with. We may have to, uh, you know, we may have to notch the pistons. We have to figure out the piston and valve clearance real quick first. So we're going to be doing that all in a video. I'm probably not going to do the piston and valve clearance in front of you. Um, cause it's not really, you know, th that's kind of something that I don't want to video cause it's, you know, it's just boring, I guess you want to say. Not really. I mean, cause I'd be, I guess I could do that. Now I, I was going to do the piston to valve clearance with the notching of the pistons. And I was going to do the, uh, the, uh, um, checking the clearance on the bearings. It's not really something that's, you know, that's something you should do when you plastic gauge that stuff. But, you know, I, I guess I could just kind of throw it in one of the other videos or whatever. What's up, fat boy Fox? What up? What up? That's okay. Um, how do you, how do those heads compare to GT40s? So the GT40s, the, the, the Windsor heads are like an aftermarket 
cast iron version of the aluminum, like what an aluminum head would be. I'm um, pretty sure they're like the 194s flow pretty good. They're a step up from the GT40s. Uh, but the other Windsors that I have, this the the 5303s, I, I can't remember the part number. They're a 202 valve, and they're uh, definitely worth using. I mean, I'm not going to use them on anything else outside of maybe just selling them. But, uh, you know, with, with this being a real budget build with the 387, for the most part, minus the cam, then we're just going to put them on there and rock it. You know, I mean, why put a set of an expensive aluminum heads on there when, you know, half of the block is still factory production anyways, right? So, you know, we bought a cheap, you know, uh, a cheap stroker crank and, and, you know, we throw it into this block. And uh, big shout out to Anderson, though, because I think Anderson said that they were going to donate a camshaft to that build. Uh, we didn't want to run a X303 that we had. We didn't want to run the B cam that we had. We wanted to run something with good, solid duration in that in that motor to kind of bring it alive. So instead of running a smaller cam, uh, Anderson, I think, said that they were going to donate us a camshaft for the 387. So that would be money well spent just in that particular spot. So um, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to run yet, you know, whether it's fuel injection or carburetor. That's something you're going to have to stick around and wait for we got a couple ideas we've already got the parts but we just kind of kicking things around on what we want to do with it but it will be running before the end of the year it should be running by the end of september so you know you will be seeing a lot of that 387 stuff coming soon <clears throat> it was cool andrew getting great pass cut yeah so what's what do we have on the channel okay some of the, uh, I don't know if I, I need your guys' input on, you know, if you guys watch this for this far, I need your guys' input. Should I do individual videos with the GT40 upper intakes? Because that's my next, you know, I'm going to get some of these other videos of what's happened lately in the channel with the, with the black car and, you know, the, just kind of these, you know, I, I just call them just kind of like, uh, you know, normal videos. Uh, they're not, whatever. You know, I got I got a lot of videos to put out, but some of the more uh, requested videos are going to be like this GT40 and the 387. So I know those videos are going to be good when I bring them out. Um, so I want to do them right. What do you guys think of the GT40 doing the intakes one at a time, or should I do them all in one video and just be done with it? Uh, the second question I wanted to ask is, should I do the phenolic spacer on each individual intake, or should I do that in another video as well? Should I do maybe two videos? One where they all three go against each other on dad's car because now dad's car is running, by the way, and it's we can go to the dyno now. Uh, we have both uh, intakes ready for the throttle bodies, so all we got to do is just hot swap them. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? <coughs> um, just let me know in the comments below if you uh, should I do uh, the Explorer one's already on the dad's car, so should I do the Explorer versus Cobra and then make another video where the uh, whatever whatever made more power, you see what I mean, would go against the tubular, or should I just do it all in one video? I think it would be cool to, to kind of do them separately. <clears throat> so you, you think maybe do all three of them in one video, all three GT40s in one video, just get it over with, see who makes more power, whatever, who, who, who flowed a little bit better. <laughs> Two videos, one with the phenolic and one without. Okay. So we'll just be done with it. I think that video will be pretty good. Uh, I know that there's been other comparisons on the uh, on YouTube. Some great information out there with the GT40 stuff. Um, I think I was watching uh, um, Rich, Richard Holner, if you guys know who he is. Uh, he did a really good, really, really good job on the uh, GT40 comparison on the engine dyno. It's really cool. And he even changed it up a little bit too with some of the spacers, some of like the throttle body spacers and stuff. I really enjoyed that. I watched that a couple times actually. If you need to get okay, so without uh, <clears throat> so moving on, guys. Uh, we're about an hour and twenty five in it. Got a couple more minutes. Uh, I encourage you guys to check the join button below. I appreciate everybody who is the chat member. I think it's right here. Everybody in green here. Um, they can they can uh, vouch for the fact that uh, you know I do speak a lot in uh, member chat. Um, not enough. I wish I can. I wish I could do more for you guys. But um, they actually, you know, this was the topic that I I said something in members chat earlier. And I, you know, is, is this something that seems like it would be a good topic? And there's just a just just a 
a crazy amount of information when it comes to trying to, you know, convert a fox body over. But, you know, I thought that was a great topic to go with. So, um, what else do we got? I want to give shout outs to NJC Fox 302, the $5 super chat. Swedish Sugar, $5 super chat. Adventures with Super Dave. Coming in with the $20 super sticker. Got a new member, SN95 Garage. I appreciate you joining the channel. SN95 also hit up with a $7 super sticker. And of course, my man, Jason Fields. Thanks once again for the $10 super chat, man. Thank you so much for you guys donating to the channel. It means a lot. It means a lot. It helps me to do events and do things on the channel that I can bring good content to you. So, um, oh, here we go. Chris Gordner. Uh, Chris was actually in my uh, last video with the uh, Fox body cruise. So uh, I, I caught him a little off guard. I didn't mean to do that, Chris. What a great guy. I didn't get a chance to get his car. I was just, had a million things going on and, and, he, and he drove by and he stopped for a second. And I think he was on his way out. So I do apologize for that, Chris. I would have got you up on video with the cruise or whatever. So anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the Fox body cruise. If you guys haven't got a chance to go check that video out, I want you to go check out at least the last Three or four minutes uh janet fox resto ended up driving into the mustang week uh and she did talk about foxtoberfest and there was some information about foxtoberfest so what's the next event that i'm heading to um i'm going to fat man invasions at the end of the month we have a stick shift event where me and danny watts are going to be uh, racing it up a little bit i think uh hopefully with some other stick shift racers that's one of the videos i'm coming out this week is the three pedal throwdown uh, we did run a 599 at 117 this past couple of weeks at three pedal throwdown. Uh, that was a really, really big feat that I've been doing for, you know, been wanting to accomplish for many years. So I big shout to, 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 to everybody who watched that. So, um, but yeah, Foxtoberfest is the next event. Oh, what am I talking about? So if you guys haven't noticed, uh, that watch, uh, if you watch Jim over at Fox chamber, um i think a couple of the other youtubers already have given away spots i will be giving away a fox toberfest spot paved spot i think that's a i don't know how much of a value it is but i'm one of the youtuber is it 50 i i i can be corrected you know don't hold that to me but one of the paved parking spots uh janet fox resto has donated to the channel to give away um it's one of i think nine i'm going to be giving away so i think i could say that i think i'm going to be number seven so sometime in september you guys are going to be sticking around on live chat we will be giving away one of the spots for foxtoberfest so if you planned on heading to foxtoberfest um that is definitely the time to uh to to, to possibly get a free spot um any any info on them shirts which ones you looking at all good. Always a pleasure chatting with you. Yes, it is, Chris. I appreciate you. So outside that, got about 60 more seconds. If you guys got some questions for the channel, um, videos this week, I'm mean, actually got quite a few. Um, they're not going to be super fancy videos, guys. I'm just going to just, it's kind of like the, you go with the flow of the channel. Like I need to put these videos out. Um, and I do apologize for Friday. Friday's video was, was off by like 45 minutes. Um, it was supposed to come out at five and it ended up coming out like five 30 or five 40 or whatever, which kind of ran into some, some other timelines. And, and it's, and, and I do apologize. It's, I had a problem with the uploader. I don't know what happens sometimes on, on YouTube. It just doesn't want to like upload. You know what I mean? So I had an issue with that. So I do apologize for, for it being late. What's up, Chuck Williams? Should tell some uh, should sell some colored neo shirts, red, blue ones. Well, it's kind of like you know, merch isn't is, isn't my you know my forte. I'm I'm not even gonna lie to you. My, I mean, some of the t-shirts that I sell, I know that they're all black or whatever. But you know, the nice thing about black t-shirts is they hide the stains. You know, I I would wear reds and blues and whites all the time, and I would get like car stains all over them and oil stains and stuff like that but i'll definitely consider changing it up a little bit uh, especially if for like the large extra large shirts i'll change up like to go to like the royal blue or you know some of the reds or whatever and see if some people want them at fox or whatever uh, congratulations on the 599 man i appreciate that i it took me a while that car was full weight 
A heater box is still in it. I don't even use it. I haven't used it in 15 years. Um, you know, full weight. It still had the spare in the back. I forgot to take it out as well. So, I mean, I could take a lot of weight out of my white car and probably go a little bit faster for the power level, but that car works. And that's one of the videos I'm going to be coming up with very soon in the next couple of weeks is just like, you know, you got to make your car work. Like make your car work for what horsepower you have versus trying to make an astronomical amount of horsepower and then having to re, you know, revert back to changing suspension all over again because your, your car reacts differently when it's 500 horsepower versus a car that's 750 horsepower versus a car that's 1,000 horsepower. So when you start really tearing up in horsepower, you almost have to go back through and start changing things again. Shocks, springs, uh, you know, adjustments, you know, control arms, you know, there's just a, a laundry list of stuff. So <laughs> get on your merch game. I bought $200 worth of stuff on, on nice, dude. Better, uh, what does that say? Better start working on that 20K subscriber video. <laughs> yeah, we're coming in on, uh, what are we at right now? Um, nine, 1977 or so, 18.977. So we're about 23 away from 19K. So that's going to be pretty far. What would I need to do with my eight and 70 uh 79 fox it's a four cylinder i have a 351 and a 5.0 to put in it but what would i need to be done for the swap there's a lot of things that need to be done for the 351 swap but And check. We back. We're good. Okay. All right. So, anyways, uh, we're gonna go ahead and head out right there. Again, guys, listen. Build your cars the way you want to build your cars. Don't let anybody tell you the way you need to build your cars. You know, I it's it's taken a lot for me and many many hours and you know thousands of dollars to get even remotely close to some of my goals with Fox Bodies. It's not always about going fast. It's not always about racing. It's not always about car shows. It's not always about uh, you know being the best. It's always about it's a, it's about what 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 you want to do with your Fox Body. Uh, so you know never never forget that. And I always will commend passion. You'll see passion in anybody's Fox body. You know, some people have more time and more money than others. Um, some people have more parts and access, accessibility to just, you know, shops and, and work and stuff like that. But the main thing is, is don't leave your car on a jack stance. I've been, I've been talking about this for many years. I've been talking about this on a how many live streams I've told you guys. I kind of end with that. You know, build the car the way you want to build your car. You know, don't don't wait because, you know, at some point you may end up not having the time or money to do it anymore. And at that point, you just lose interest on your project. Uh, one, th one, one thing that will keep you from losing interest is driving it. So Fox bodies at this point are my life. I mean, it's what I do every day. You know, I enjoy racing them the most, pushing them to the limits having fun with them, but you don't have to do what I do. You can do what you want to do. So whether you want to drag race it or circle track it or whatever. So we all enjoy these Fox bodies. We all meet in a common ground where we love these Fox bodies. And I appreciate you guys for watching the channel and supporting the channel that you do. So um, again, build them the way you want to build them, drive them the way you want to drive them. Don't never let anybody tell you any different than that. So
Outside of that, guys, I appreciate you all for watching the live stream today as we will be discussing something else next week on our whiteboard of knowledge. We'll hammer down on some good stuff, Fox Body related, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys in the comments this week on these videos. So got that. Uh, uh, that's what my stinks. Okay. So, uh, I have a 93 Ranger true statement. I got a friend that has Capri's. Yes. I daily drive my Fox bodies in town in Lexus. Nice. So, all right, guys, without further ado, I'm gonna let you go. I thank you so much for, again, for watching. I will see you soon in this week's videos. Sorry for all those guys that, that missed the live stream. Comment below, chime in. Let me know what you think. Have a nice evening.